Hello, hello, hey, sweet people. Welcome to another episode of Inglês no Cru Rádio, an English podcast where sometimes we talk about English, sometimes we talk about <laughs> other things. But, but we are always speaking English, so... We are always... Eh, 95% of the time we're speaking in English and we always have a smile on our faces and a good attitude. Yes, we try to, at least. How are you doing? How are you, Foster? <laughs> Jinx! <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. What about you? I'm not doing too bad. I can't complain. So this week on the show, we are talking about students. That means you listening to the show. You are an English student. You are learning English. So this show is for you. And more specifically this week, we are talking about how to maximize your English classes. So when you are taking classes with a teacher, how you can really get the most out of those classes so that you learn faster, more confidently, and just have more fun in the process. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So yesterday we talked about the idea of cramming. So if you did not listen to that, you should check it out. And today, Alexia... You suggested an idea that we haven't really talked about, but I'm very interested to hear about. So tell me, what's your idea? Um, not idea, but I think it's like a um, lemma, right? Like a, Slogan. a mantra. Yeah. Um, trust the process. We often hear this like when people are talking about our lives and everything is meant to be and trust the process because everything will be fine. But I like to think about when you are learning something new or when you're practicing that thing as well. Absolutely. So Alexa and I were talking, we said, okay, we're going to record an entire week about how students can use their classes more effectively. And almost immediately, Alexia said three simple words. Trust the process. Yeah. So, my point is, first, you got to find a teacher for you, right? So, someone that you are really connected to and someone that you trust. Yes. Because this person will be there for you to help you with one of the most important things in your life, that is English. Yes. And we are assuming that you already have a good English teacher because we recorded five episodes about that last week. Yeah. And once you have this English teacher, so you're good to go. And maybe you want to improve or learn English um, the sooner the better, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not like that. You won't be able to really, really, really speak this language fluently either like do anything with this language without trusting the process that your teacher is presenting to you okay so i have two questions to begin first question alexia when you say trust the process are you essentially just saying be patient or is there a difference no i'm saying be patient and trust your teacher Because it depends on the methodology and methodology mm -hmm. on each teacher, right? So Foster has a way of teaching things. I have another way of teaching things. And maybe a third teacher will have another way of teaching things. And this doesn't mean that I am wrong or Foster is wrong or the other teacher is wrong. It's just a different way of presenting how you should learn. Right. right, and you get anxious because of that, because you want to be better and get better and yeah, start communicating as, sooner, um, as soon as possible. Yeah, so you can say as soon as possible or sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I definitely agree with you. We are on the same page. I think I would just add one thing. It's, for me... It's not entirely trusting 
the process of the teacher because naturally most of your studying is done outside of the classroom? No, that's my other point. That's my other point because remember that the last episode that was like, okay, so your teacher won't be doing everything for you. You need to do stuff. You need to practice. You need to study. Don't think that your teacher is going to be inside of your head speaking English for you. That's not going to happen. Right. So you got to do. Right. So I think what I would add is if you're going to trust the process, you need some type of process, right? Mm -hmm. This does not have to be super complicated. And your process, your routine, your study habits, all of these things are going to look a lot different depending on what your goals are, depending on what your current level of English is. But it could be something very simple. Let's say I'm going to read in English every day for 20 minutes. I imagine each day when you're reading, you're probably not learning that much. Maybe you're learning some new vocabulary or something, but it's not like you read for 20 minutes and then you can speak English a lot better, right? Mm -hmm. But if you read in English every day for a year, you're definitely going to improve a lot. But in order to do that and have the motivation to do that, you really have to trust in the process. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you listen to the very first episode of English in Ikuruhaji, you're going to see that my English was completely different from today's English. And that's because I literally speak English every single day of my life. And of course, because of my work and because of my boyfriend. But either way, I could just tell Foster, okay, I don't, I'm not doing this. You can speak Portuguese. Why am I speaking English? So it's a thing that I want to get better as well. And that's why I like to practice whenever I can. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, because when you think about the process of learning a new language and you have to trust that process that requires a lot of time and dedication and motivation. So this is almost directly connected to your specific goals, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is it's almost impossible to have a good process, to know what you need to study and to trust in that process without knowing why you are doing that process in the first place, right? Yeah, so, so why are you studying English? Is it because of your work? Is it because a personal thing? Is it because, I don't know. First, you need to understand why. Why are you doing this? Uh, I have a lot of, I get a lot of emails from people like, hey, I want to study with you, uh, with English and Crew. So can you tell me about your courses and like what are they and then I'm always answering like yeah but why do you want to study what's your main goal here yeah absolutely and bringing this back to how you can use this in your English classes I think it's very important most teachers should ask you that should be one of the first things why are you taking classes with me What are you trying to do? Are you trying to travel? Are you trying to improve your pronunciation? Is this for work? Why are you studying a new language? So that needs to be the starting point, right? Yeah, yeah. And then... Because this way, you can understand better why you're doing that. Also the teacher. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It is super important, fundamental, that you know... Why are you doing this? And I imagine there are a lot of people listening to the show right now that have listened to us for hours and hours. And if they really sit and stop and think, why am I trying to learn English? For some people, it's probably not very clear. And it has to be clear. It's learning language yeah. is a long process. So you got to have that reason. Yeah. And you don't, it doesn't have to be like 
um, oh, because I want to travel the world, because I want to work. Maybe you're learning English just because you want to understand better um, songs in English, right? Or maybe you want to watch shows on Netflix without the subtitles. This is already a goal for you. It doesn't have to be like a big goal, you know? Absolutely. The goal is not important. The important thing is that you have a goal and you understand what that is and why it's important for you. Yeah. So for me, it's important for me because first I have uh, an American boyfriend and I want to communicate with his family and friends without any problem. Yeah. Perfect. That's my main goal. And I think that nowadays I can do that pretty well, but it's still a learning process. Absolutely. I don't know why I'm saying absolutely so much. I think just because I'm <laughs> agreeing with everything you're saying. Yes. So, Alexia, I really agree. And I think I can end with a quick story. Last week, when I was talking to my therapist, I was essentially doing what most of my English students do. But I was like, hey, like, what can I do now to make my life better? Like, give me one thing that's just going to improve everything. And she just looked at me and she was like, Foster, you know it doesn't work like that. It's a process. Like, we come in and we talk every week and it takes time. So, these things are weird. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's... these things are weird. And my therapist also told me that as well, like, Alexia, You take care of yourself, like taking care, ta taking care of others. And sometimes you have to like push a button and say, no, I'm not doing that. I, I had to take care of myself, of yourself. And I was like, but I can't because it's really hard and I don't know how to do it. And she was like, but you don't have to do it tomorrow, but eventually. So let's work on that with that. Yeah. I don't know how yeah. to say that. I think the tendency... Imagine you want to learn how to play the piano and you mm -hmm. sit down with a piano teacher and you say, okay, I want to learn Beethoven's fifth symphony. And obviously that's ridiculous. Like, okay, you don't know how to play piano. First you need to learn how to sit and then how to put your fingers on the piano. And then you need to learn scales and music theory. That's the process. <laughs> and it's just, you can't just jump. You can't skip it all. Yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say here at the end. But <laughs> the idea of trusting the process okay. is very important for language, for all things. Yes. So go ahead, trust the process, trust us, and have a very, very good day. Yes. Have a beautiful day. Keep up the good fight. And Liz well. Bye. <laughs>